on our HCRI research program about sea urchin herbivory in shallow water ecosystems, Echinopteryx as allies with Trinustes. For a little bit of background, um, a great deal of research has already been done on sea urchin herbivory in Hawaii, particularly focusing on Trinustes fritilla, the collector urchin. For example, Stinson et al., also working under an HCRI research program, has found that Trinustes have preferences for specific algal species, and it will consume invasive algae species. And in fact, it will consume quite a bit of invasive algae, as much as 7 grams per day in laboratory experiments. These researchers working in the field found that at moderate densities, Trinustes fritilla, about one urchin per square meter, can significantly reduce invasive algae cover on Hawaiian coral reefs. So that is, Trinustes fritilla is an important grazer on coral reefs that helps to prevent the overgrowth of algae that can smother corals. This research on sea urchin herbivory is of special interest here in Hawaii because invasive algae is becoming more and more of a problem. For example, in Oahu, invasive Gracilaria salicornia regularly spoils beaches and reefs. However, in addition to Trinustes, species of the genus Echinopteryx are also prevalent in Hawaii. Echinopteryx sea urchins are diademetid urchins with an Indo-Pacific distribution. They can get quite large, up to about 15 centimeters in test diameter, and they're common in Hawaii and can occur at high abundances of as high as three urchins per square meter. We hypothesize that Echinopteryx and Trinustes working together could collectively exert greater impacts on invasive algae, particularly if there are differences in the distribution patterns between these two species. We have three research components in our program, and the first involves resolving biodiversity within the genus Echinopteryx using genetics and morphology. And that is, before we can really investigate sea urchin herbivory by Echinopteryx, we need to know what species are here and how to distinguish them. There are two nominally recognized species of Echinopteryx. They look overall quite similar, and they can be difficult to distinguish in the field. This is especially true for the dark morph of Echinopteryx calamaris, which can be easily confused with the typically dark Echinopteryx diadema. There's also a bit more confusion about species in this genus because both dark and white morphs of Echinopteryx calamaris exist, including in Hawaii, and it has been suggested by other researchers that these different color morphs are actually different species. To help clear up some of this confusion, I hypothesize that sets of physical characteristics that distinguish different Echinopteryx morphotypes in Hawaii are indicative of different genetic identities, that is, of different evolutionary histories. In the lab, I made species identifications of each specimen using a set of physical characteristics that I found could be used to dis distinguish the two nominal species. And briefly, that is that for E. diadema, the thin secondary spines are finely banded, whereas for E. calamaris, the thin secondary spines are never banded. The external surfaces of the primary spines for E. calamaris have crosswise ridges, whereas for Echinopteryx diadema, the ridges run parallel to the length of the spine. And finally, for Echinopteryx calamaris on the apical system of the test, or the top of the test, there can be a raised comb or a balloon-like sac, whereas for Echinopteryx diadema, the top of the test is always flat. To examine my specimens genetically, I dissected gonad tissue, from which I extracted DNA. I then amplified a portion of the mitochondrial DNA using polymerase chain reaction. The portion of the DNA that I amplified is a gene that exhibits variability such that it has been useful for uh, examining evolutionary relationships such as those between species. My amplicons were sequenced in both directions, yielding 539 base pairs of nucleotides for each specimen. From my DNA data, I constructed a cladogram, and I found that for the two deepest genetic plates, the set of physical characteristics that I had used to determine species is indicative of separate genetic identity. 
That is, all specimens of E. diadema are monophyletic, as are all specimens of E. calamaris. And there is no support in my data set for additional genetic divergence in this genus in Hawaii. I did find that four of eight white morphs in my data set had the same exact sequence as dark morphs. And so color in E. calamaris is not indicative of different genetic um, identity or evolutionary history. Instead, color variation in E. calamaris is the result of polymorphisms and or plasticity. So that is, these different color morphs in Hawaii are not likely candidates for new unrecognized species. <clears throat> so um, our goals for this first component of our research program have been met. We've determined that there are probably only two species of Echinopteryx in Hawaii, and I've developed a key for how to tell <coughs> the species apart. So before I go on, I wanted to extend mahalos uh, for this first part of our research program. Special thanks go to the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, in particular the Harris Lasios Lab, where I was a short-term fellow and conducted the molecular work. We also have had a lot of UHH students helping on this project, and I'd like to especially thank Minoaka Kahana Nui and Camille Barnett. So for our second research component, we are investigating interspecific differences in the feeding behaviors 